and welcome to Magda Knits. This is my little corner where I talk about all of my knitting, yarn dyeing and yarn spinning. My name is Magda and I'm coming to you from the southeast of England where I live with my partner and originally we come from Poland. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. I hope you will enjoy it and I hope you will stick around till the end. I will start off with what I'm wearing because that's the usual format and let's just address what you see on the screen. So this is something that I completed a few weeks ago. It's called Salmon and it's a tunic. So I'm not gonna get up and show it to you in its full length because it will be impossible um, with this angle that I have here, but I am going to insert a picture so you can see it in full. Uh, as I said, it's called Salmon so it's a tunic by Mini Me Knit Design and I absolutely loved the process of knitting it and I really really liked the outcome. So I was talking about this project last time in my previous episode while it was still work in progress and I feel like I have already pretty much addressed everything that I had to say about it. I realize that sometimes when I talk about projects while they are whips I just cover everything and when I actually have a finished object I literally have nothing much to say about it anymore and I feel like this is the case with this one. Um, when I was recording my video last time it was still obviously work in progress and at that point I was very close to finishing. Um, I was a little bit concerned whether I was going to have enough yarn or not. Uh, I thought I was going to play yarn chicken but actually it turned out that I had plenty of yarn left. So I have used only eight balls and the yarn that I was using for this project was the Katia Concept Merino Cotton Yarn which is uh, a very very light lofty yarn and I think it's got a really nice um, marling effect um, on the garment which I really really like. And the overall cost of this project was £35.92 pounds for the eight balls. Um, and I still have one ball left. So originally I purchased nine, uh, but in the end I used for this project only eight balls. And when I say eight balls, it literally was eight balls. I had very, very little um, waste yarn left. And whatever I had left on that eighth ball, I used for like finishing the pockets and stuff. So it literally was eight balls for the small size. So um, I guess, yeah, in terms of the amount of yarn, it's also important to mention what size I was knitting. Because if you are planning to make it bigger, then obviously you will need more. But yeah, I absolutely love how it fits. Um, as I said, it's super light, so it doesn't feel like it's going to stretch a lot with wear. Um, it does have the pocket at the front. However, because the it's yarn, uh, if you put something quite heavy, it is pulling it down. So like, I can't really put my phone in it. Uh, but I still like the idea of like, you know, putting my hands in the pockets. Uh, but it's not necessarily something very practical that you're going to make a lot of use of. Uh, you could put a tissue in there or something really light. Uh, but still, I think it was a nice feature and the pattern, it does give you the option to skip the pocket. So it gives you instructions for both versions if you don't want to have the pocket. Um, however, I guess it's worth mentioning that if you do want to skip the pocket, the instructions tell you to put a little bit of ribbing around the waistline. Um, and you will have to, I guess, use your imagination to imagine what it's going to look like because the project page doesn't include the images of what it looks like without the pocket. All the images that I have seen of this um, have pockets at the front, so as I say, you will need a little bit of imagination. Um, but yes, this is the finished object. Um, I will report back on how this is wearing. I have not been wearing it a lot, I guess, because it's short sleeve. Um, you could wear it with uh, like a tight fitting top um, underneath. So then I guess that could make the garments um, more versatile and you can wear it pretty much at any point of the year. Um, but I've realized I actually don't have a tight fitting uh, long sleeve top that could go with it. So 
perhaps I need to get one, or perhaps I just need to get a cardigan. I will be talking about knitting cardigan um, in a bit. So maybe this is what this garment actually needs on top. Um, but yes, when it comes to how the yarn is wearing, I will report back once I start wearing this uh, tunic a little bit more. Uh, this is the second time I'm wearing this since I finished, so it still is pretty much brand new. I guess one thing that I can also mention is that I have not washed and blocked this garment. And that's purely because this yarn, it, it just doesn't need any finishing. It literally doesn't need anything else. Like you don't even have to wash it. It's ready to go. Like the stitches look perfect. Um, you know, very often once you finish knitting, especially with wool, the stitches can be just a little bit wonky here and there and you need that blocking and you need that finishing just to, you know, kind of let everything fall into place nicely. But I feel like this yarn doesn't really need it. And to be honest, I really love the fit. So I'm also a little bit concerned that if I wash it, it is going to change a little bit its shape. So I just want to make the most of it before I actually block it. Um, I'm not going to wash it until it actually needs washing. <laughs> so yes, this is all about this project. And I'm going to move on to another project, which is also a finished object, but I don't have it with me because it was a gift. A Christmas gift for a friend of mine. So the gift that I already sent away and it was safely received by the recipient was a pair of socks. So I'm going to insert the picture to show you what they look like. Again I was showing them to you in my previous episode and it's a pair of colorwork socks. Um, the pattern is called Garland Socks and it's by Leslie Melliship. These socks uh, were knit on 2.25 millimeter needles and I was knitting them in the round um, on double pointed needles. Uh, I was talking about this whole drama of uh, DPNs versus magic loop versus tiny circular needles or the nine inch circular needles in my previous episode. Um, in the end it was all knit on DPNs I'm not a massive fan of DPNs anymore, I just find it a little bit fiddly, but uh, in terms of managing the floats, it's definitely much easier than Magic Loop, so um, I decided to stick to it. Uh, and in my previous episode, I was also talking about the fact that I was running out of yarn. So I was running out of the uh, main navy color, which is called Deep Ocean, by the way. So the yarn that I used for this project was Drops Fable. Um, the colorway was called Deep Ocean and the white contrasting color um, or the background color. Depends how you look at it. Um, I don't even know which one is like the background color, which one is the main color. But either way, the white one um, was I think called Off-White. And I used um, one skein of each color. The original plan was to knit the toes as well in the deep ocean color, but I ran out. So in the end, I could either buy the new wool of the same colorway, which actually I thought I was going to do, but I really didn't want to buy more yarn at that point. So I decided that actually I could rip back the toes of the first sock and salvage some of that navy color and just make the toes in white. I must admit, I'm not loving the outcome. I think it looks a little bit strange, um, or it's just not something that I'm totally used to. I think I really like, um, I really like when my cuffs, heels and toes are knit in the same color, but it's okay, um, it's not too bad. And my friend absolutely loved them. Um, she sent me a message and she was like over the moon. So I'm really happy that um, she's happy. And yeah, I think I don't really want to knit color work socks anytime soon because um, I'm a little bit sick of this pattern. Uh, this is the second time I'm knitting these in a row and I just don't take pleasure um, from knitting the same thing twice, especially in a row. Like when I cast one thing off, I just 
want a little bit of a break and just like move on to something else before I cast the same thing on again. So I don't quite want to see this pattern anymore for a while. God knows I might not even knit it ever again. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was my second finished object uh, to show you this time. And this is it for the finished objects. I have not finished anything else. And let's move on to the works in progress then. So the first whip that I would like to show you is uh, the bigger one. And it's a sweater by Rachel Aylesley that's called Primavera. So in my previous episode, I did mention that I wanted to cast it on and I did. So uh, this is what it looks like. I've got the yoke finished. I've got the body finished as well. And I'm knitting on the sleeves. So the first one is uh, halfway done, I guess. And the second one is still in progress. So this uh, project is knit in the Holst Garn Super Soft Yarn, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But let's first focus on the actual project uh, in the pattern and the construction. So um, it's got obviously color work section here and on the bottom and what I'm doing is I'm using different size needles for the color work and for the plain part of the stocking net here in the middle. Um, by having previous experience with knitting um, color work garments I have realized that my gauge is much tighter or a bit tighter on the color work section than in plain stocking net stitch so I am using 3.25 millimeter needles around the color work and I am knitting with three millimeter needles on the stocking net section. I feel like I could get away with going down even more a needle size on this um, plain stocking knit section. Um, but I think after I block it, it is going to be absolutely fine. So this is how it's coming along. And I have decided to go for the folded neckline and I have messed it up. So it reminded me um, of my Friday tea t-shirt by Petit Knit that I was knitting this summer or spring, um, which had folded neckline as well. And I messed it up there as well. And I also broke my needles while knitting that folded neckline. And I remembered why. I need to find some tutorials and I need to watch some YouTube videos and just figure out how to do it in a different way. So basically, in this pattern and also petite knit she was also giving exactly the same instructions for folded neckline you are supposed to cast on um, the neckline uh, the usual kind of long tail casting way and then you're knitting the ribbing sort of halfway or twice the length that you would like the collar to be once you've got a long collar um, you have your live stitches on the bottom and then you're supposed to take a pair of needles and pick up the cast on edge and pick up the stitches around the cast on edge that is a nightmare especially when you don't cast on loosely which i didn't so it was a bit of a nightmare to to get into the stitches especially with this really dark yarn i couldn't see the stitches properly it was really difficult so I thought I was going to be clever and I wasn't because I thought I'm just going to pick up as many stitches as I can but if I skip some it's going to be fine. Essentially once you pick up the stitches from the top around the cast on edge then you fold it in half and then you are knitting together with your live stitches the ribbing to have the neckline. So clearly you need to have the same number of stitches on top and on the bottom. But I thought, okay, well, then I'm just going to knit it together. Some of them, but some of them will not have a partner. So I'm just going to knit it on its own. Don't do that because what's going to happen is you're going <laughs> to twist your neckline. So I'm going to show it to you. Um, I hope you will be able to see it, that it's just, it's not straight. this is what you're going to end up with. Very disappointing. Um, 
but I guess again not necessarily as visible. Um, I think the color work takes more attention and you will notice this only if you look closely. Again, I know it's there, I am bothered a little bit, but I'm not gonna rip back for sure. So it's just gonna stay there. But I definitely need to um, watch some tutorials that is doing this kind of um, folded neckline instructions where you've got live stitches on both sides of the of the neck collar and you don't have to pick anything up because that is a nightmare. But otherwise, I have not made many mistakes. Um, surprisingly, I think I haven't made many mistakes on the color work. Um, there is some, but again, I don't think you can actually tell. <laughs> I don't even know where they are. Um, and I am quite pleased with how this is looking. Uh, in terms of the length, I've already cast off the bottom and at the moment the length is perfect. So this is this is the length that I like for my sweaters. However, um, if you are familiar with Holstgarn Super Soft, um, and I'm pretty sure you are, if you haven't worked with it before, I'm sure you have heard other podcasters talking about this yarn. Essentially, the most important thing about it is that it's unwashed and it still has spinning oils on it. And so definitely it changes its properties or its feel once you actually wash it. So I did swatch and I did wash my swatch and my swatch shrank lengthwise. So actually this may become a little bit shorter. And I'm not entirely sure how much this is going to shrink and I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to like how much it's going to shrink but I figured that if it is a little bit too short I, I'm just going to rip back a little bit of ribbing and just add or actually I'm going to add more ribbing so I'm just going to unpick the cast off edge and I'm just going to add a little bit of, um, of length on the ribbing side um, I do like uh, a little bit of a longer ribbing so I don't mind um, so yeah, so hopefully it's going to be fine. This sleeve um, is going to have some color work here before the cuff as well. So I'm hoping to finish this uh, in the next few days, I guess. Now about the yarn. So as I said, it's um, Holst Garn Super Soft. The colorways that I'm using, it's um, it's graphite as the main color, so it's really dark, dark gray, almost black. And as a contrasting color, um, I'm using a colorway called Nougat. I don't have it in a bowl with me here, but it's kind of like a oatmeal color kind of thing, a little bit grayish, beige-ish, beige-ish. Anyway, it's not completely white. And the most important thing, I guess, for me to say about the, working with this yarn is that it stains my hands horribly. Like, I don't know if you, you will be able to see my hands, like how horrible they look right now. Um, if you looked at my hands and you were wondering, like, why are her nails black? It's disgusting. I know, but I can't get rid of those stains. Um, I, I'm so disappointed. At first I thought it was the spinning oils that were making my hands so dirty, but now I begin to believe that it's actually the dye from the yarn. Um, it's just, it's horrendous. It really is making my hands so dirty and it's really difficult to actually clean it off. Like just using soap and warm water is not enough. Like I actually have to take like a really harsh um, nail brush and like wash my hands like really really hard and it's still not helping like it's some of it will come off uh, but you can still see some staining especially around my nails which just looks disgusting so it is really disappointing and it makes me slightly worried about how this is going to wear and whether I will be able to get rid of all of the dye during the washing process because the last thing I want is for this garment to stain my whole body while I'm wearing it 
Like, I don't want to have gray patches around my neckline. Uh, that would be horrible. So hopefully I will give it a few good washes and I can get rid of that dye and of spinning oils or whatever it is that it's staining uh, so badly. And hopefully it's going to be fine. Obviously that leaves also a little bit of concern about the contrasting color because if there is so much staining, then this color work is going to uh, absorb some of that staining. And that, yes, that is that is really worrying. Um, as long as the staining is distributed sort of equally, I won't mind for it to go darker. But if I was knitting this with like pure white contrasting color and this got stained in the washing process, I would get really, really annoyed. But yeah, we, we will see what happens. Um, I, I'm wondering if you guys have used this yarn before in this particular colorway or any other dark colorway and like what happened during the washing process? Did you use it with color work? Was there a lot of staining? Um, did washing help or is this still staining your body? Um, I'm really curious to know because even though I absolutely love how this garment is turning out, I am really concerned about what's going to happen once it's actually finished and ready to wear. Um, but yeah, that's my Primavera pattern. Did I mention the name of the pattern? I hope I did. If I didn't, I'm pretty sure I put it on the screen. So yes, next time you see it, it will definitely be completed because I'm pretty sure it will take me just a few days um, to finish. Oh my god, I just dropped the ball. Um, it will take me just a few days to finish those sleeves really and I am currently off work so there is plenty of time for me to knit. So let me show you the second project that I'm currently working on. It's not the most attractive looking project because it's a pair of ribbed socks in a very plain color, nothing is really happening. Um, these socks are for my partner and I am doing them in a two by two ribbing. So they look really cinched in, but there is a lot of stretch as always with the ribbing. Uh, I chose to go for a ribbing all the way because on the previous pairs that I knit for him, he kind of started to complain that the socks are slowly becoming a little bit too loose. Um, I guess this is the case when you wear the socks for a bit, they kind of uh, lose their elasticity. It all comes back after washing them, but um, yeah, it, they kind of feel a little bit too loose for him. So I decided to go for ribbing everywhere, hoping that they are going to stay a little bit tighter to the foot and they are maybe not going to become as loose with wearing them for a couple of days. Um, so yeah, there is literally nothing interesting to say about these socks. Uh, I am knitting them on 2.25 millimeter needles, so the US one, and it's just the standard top-down construction with the heel flap and gusset. I'm almost, no, actually I already started closing the toe, so the first sock is almost finished, one more to go. Um, it is not a Christmas gift. Uh, at first I was wondering whether I was going to make him a pair of socks as a Christmas gift, but I didn't really want to put more pressure on me with like knitting gifts, so uh, I decided he will just receive them when they're finished. I'm pretty sure I will be done before the end of the year, but I didn't really put like a definite deadline, oh it has to be for Christmas. I've got other things to give him for Christmas, so it's fine. This is just going to be like a little bonus. But let's talk about the yarn. So the yarn that I'm using on these is the Woolly Knit um, Yarn to Cone, but this is their uh, wool and nylon blend. So I guess you can say like a typical sock yarn. It's fingering weight, I think. Or do they say it's light fingering? which got me slightly confusing, but um, it feels and it knits up like a normal fingering sock weight um, yarn. Um, and yeah, so I got this cone, it's 200 grams and it cost me six pounds. I got another one as well, which I'm gonna show you in this uh, 
my own color. And speaking of colors, so woolly knit have slightly confusing color names, which sometimes are not really representative of the color that uh, they really are. So this one is called copper brown, and that's fair enough. It looks a little bit like a copper color. It's beautiful, by the way, and I would love to have a sweater in this color, and I'm sure I will have it one day. Maybe not necessarily in this yarn with nylon, but I think they are British breeds will um, have something similar, maybe in a different colorway name. I think it was called cinnamon, but it's really beautiful and and this is accurate, fine. But this one, um, again, I'm not entirely sure whether you're going to be able to see the real shade. Uh, yeah, I guess it's quite accurate. So it looks kind of it looks a little bit almost dark green, like a khaki color, but the colorway is called deep brown coffee. I mean, to me, this has nothing to do with brown and it has nothing to do with coffee. If my coffee turned this color, it would go down the drain. It's weird. And I've got another yarn that I'm gonna show you in a moment, moment that I'm, I got from Woolly Knit as well, and it also has a really confusing name. So I think when it comes to Woolly Knit, don't trust their names. However, the images that they put on the website, I think are fairly accurate. So ignore the names, look at the images. Um, I'm completely not bothered by this shade because again, I was going for what I was seeing on the images and it's completely fine. Uh, I did want to get black one because my partner wanted black socks, but they didn't have any black yarn. So just went for something like the most neutral and the darkest that they had. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting to work with. Um, it's got quite a lot of spin on it, which I'm hoping is going to help also with durability. But they don't feel... Um, particularly squishy and soft. I don't want to say that it feels ropey because it doesn't, but um, it's not something super pleasant and super soft. We shall see how it behaves after washing. I did not swatch, so I don't know um, how this yarn changes, if it changes at all after washing. But yeah, this might be my new go-to yarn for socks because 200 grams at six pounds is not too bad and it wasn't a sale price. Um, I made a couple of purchases um, from Woolly Knit. Um, two of these were during sales. Uh, this one was just spontaneous purchase of some sock yarn but I've missed the sales um, completely so that was full price which I still think is a really um, is a really good value for money. So yeah, I shall show them to you next time once they're finished. So actually, while I'm talking about Woolly Knit, let's just jump into acquisitions, why not? Um, acquisitions slash future plans. So this is the second um, bit that I got from Woolly Knit. Um, it's British Naturals, it's their DK weight yarn. And I got this um, right after I got the cones that I was showing you in my previous episode. So I got the British wool cones in navy during their Black Friday sales. But after Black Friday, they had Cyber Monday sales as well. So I couldn't help myself because this 100% wool yarn in a 50 gram ball um, was sold in a pack of 10. So I got 10 of these bowls for $9.99. It's insane. I mean, why not? <laughs> I did not have any particular project in mind and I usually don't buy yarn so sp spontaneously without having any project in mind, but it was just too much of a bargain to just let it go. Um, and I knew that it's such a neutral and nice color and it will be easy to find a project for it. So. So actually I did. Um, I am going to knit um, a cardigan. It's called Misty Morning Cardigan by Zanate Knits. I probably 
don't pronounce her name correctly, I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I think she's Latvian and I have been following this designer for a while. I discovered her through Raverly and some of her color work projects. She has designed some really beautiful sweaters with some beautiful color work yoke that I think represents some Latvian pagan symbols. I hope I'm not making this up. I'm pretty sure this was the case with uh, some of her designs, or at least one of them. Uh, and I think they're beautiful. And then I just came across this cardigan, which I think is going to look good in this yarn. Um, I already swatched. I am a stitch off the gauge, which I think is fine. I might knit just a little bit tighter to try to aim to get the right gauge. The right gauge, I think think is 20 stitches per 10 centimeters but I should be fine it's because I really need a cardigan I needed a cardigan for a very long time I've been talking about making a cardigan probably in every episode of my podcast it's just that it never happens I tend to gravitate towards projects that are just a little bit more eye-catching maybe a little bit more interesting but I tend to forget about what I really need in my wardrobe. What I really need is a cardigan. So actually, I think after I finish my Primavera, this will be the next project that I cast on. I was meant to cast on a project by Petit Knit. And I can't remember the name of the pattern from the top of my head, so I'm gonna put it on the screen. I was meant to knit it with the Woolly Knit British uh, wool cones. But I think I'm a bit more excited about this yarn now and uh, I definitely need a cardigan, not yet another sweater. I actually realized the other day that I'm really running out of space in my wardrobe and I think soon I will have to make some drastic decisions and I will have to start ripping back things that I'm not wearing because they just take space and I actually don't wear them. So I think this probably will happen very soon. Um, but yes, so about the color of this wool, the shade is called dark gray and I'm looking at the screen here and it looks more gray on the screen than it is in reality. This is brown guys, it is not gray. So yet again, slightly confusing name, uh, but the image was showing this color pretty well so I kind of knew what I was going for or I was hoping I was going for brown rather than grey. However, because I do like grey, I wouldn't mind if it turned out to be more grey than it is brown. Yeah, anyway, slightly confusing names, so keep that in mind if you are buying something um, from Woolly Knit. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is some yarn spinning. Um, I have showed this to you the last time. This was the completely messed up and overspun Andean wool top, which I chained blind, chained blind, chained plied. And I was very unhappy with how it felt. It came out very ropey, quite overspun, and it was just meant to go into my stash and I was not meant to do anything with it because I believed that this yarn is just wasted. However, this is the second one that I spun from the second bobbin and actually it's not the end of the world as it turns out. I feel like my podcast should include a new section and I should have a section where I'm saying thank you to everyone that actually helped me uh, by giving advice on various knitting or spinning things. And this is one of the situations. So as I said, I thought I completely messed up. But I got contacted by a lovely viewer, Tracy, who said she had a very similar experience with her chain plied yarn. And what she did, she just basically washed it, she hung it to dry, and she even put some weight on it, I think, just to pull it down a little bit. And she said it didn't turn out as badly as she thought. And I thought to myself, well, actually, why not giving it a try? Because uh, before that, or last time I was showing this yarn to you, it wasn't washed. It's because 
I guess, so every time I spin, after I, I'm done with flying, I always wash my yarn. But I think I have never really seen a massive difference between the finished yarn as it got off the wheel and after it got washed. Um, so I didn't believe that this overspun yarn was going to change much. So I didn't even bother washing it. Uh, but it turned out that actually this yarn completely transformed and it's become usable. So I gave it a wash. It was funny because when I took it off the wheel, uh, when I was spinning the second one, it was completely overspun. And as I put it on my nitty noddy and I took it off, it was, you know, in that loop just before you put it in the skein, it literally just crinkled up on itself. Like the whole, the whole skein just went like completely shrunk on itself. It was so overspun. But I put it in a washing um, and then I gave it a good thwack, you know? Um, if you're not a spinner, if you're not familiar with like uh, yarn thwacking, basically you wash your yarn, you get rid of the excess water and then you just bash it either on the edge of a chair or on a door frame. It's really counterintuitive because when you think about yarn, oh, you have to be like really careful with it. Like be careful with wet yarn because like it can felt. But this is like, you just literally thwack it and you bash it around anything you can. <laughs> it can feel really liberating, you know, if you are really angry, that really helps. Um, but yeah, so I did that. I hang it to dry. I was meant to hang something heavy underneath to like pull it down, but I didn't have to because this yarn was completely transformed. It was not crinkling up on itself anymore. It wasn't um, as overspun. Probably if I was to check it, whether it's overspun or not, it probably would like um, start twisting on itself. Um, eventually a little bit, but it's nothing compared to what it was after it got off the wheel. So thank you so much, Tracy, because you saved this yarn and I actually became really excited about knitting with it. Uh, I already started and then I ripped back because uh, it didn't, it wasn't the right size. So at first I was thinking to knit myself a pair of um, house socks, but I think I will not have enough yardage um yeah i'm not in i i don't think so so i wanted to knit a pair of slippers i found some pattern on ravelry uh can't remember what it was from the top of my head but i did not gauge swatch and they turned out way too small so i ripped back and that's why this cake looks a little bit um different than this one uh but yeah this is this is what this yarn is going to turn into and after I ri ripped back, I kind of lost uh, my steam and my interest with this yarn, but I will definitely go back to it. And this yarn will definitely go back um, to my knitting needles and I will make something from it. I'm just so incredibly happy that it wasn't a complete waste. And yeah, speaking of thanking the viewers, uh, in my previous episode, I was also talking about struggling with my maths <laughs> and the fact that I don't like when the patterns are telling you to distribute a certain number of stitches evenly across a yoke or whatever. Um, but uh, another lovely viewer contacted me on Ravelry, so thank you Vicky for contacting me. She gave me a link to a website which actually is doing all this maths for you. You literally have to put your numbers in and it's doing it all for you. So amazing and mind blown because I didn't know this website exists and it literally changed my life and I've already made use of it. I've already used it on the Primavera um, pattern and it just is amazing. So I'm going to link this website in the description below this video. If you are not familiar with it, if you're not aware of this website existing and you struggle with distributing your stitches as well, go for it, it's going to transform your life. I think this website also um, offers you other solutions. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I think it's um, it helps you with distributing the creases on the sleeve. Like you just have to put like the, the number of stitches you have currently around your arm and how many stitches you wanna end up with 
and I think it just works out for you like how often you have to decrease or something like that anyway like it's uh, it offers more than that so extremely useful definitely in my bookmarks now and I will make use of it in the future so thank you again um I said it last time and I'm gonna say it again I don't know what I would do without you guys because you have given me so many tips and lovely advice that I just I just keep improving as a knitter, thinner, yarn dyer. And yeah, just, I want it to keep coming. <laughs> there is so many more things that I can learn from you. Um, but yes, I was talking about spinning. Um, what I'm currently spinning, um, actually, I'm gonna show you my early Christmas gift. So I got a drum carter which I'm gonna to try to show you, but it's extremely heavy. This is really heavy, like, uh, I hope you appreciate the sacrifice. Ow, ow, ow. Right, so this is my drum carder that I got for Christmas from my partner. Um, drum carders can be quite expensive. Uh, so he got it secondhand um, from eBay. And it was, uh, I guess, cheaper because it's missing um, one part. So you can probably see the slots here. Uh, what it should have is like a little um, board, I guess, that slides into the slot here, and then it creates like um, like a table that you put the fiber on it, and then it kind of feeds into the drum, and then you are doing your carding. But um, yeah, it's missing this part, and the plan is that my partner is going to cut a little board for me, and then yeah, it's gonna it's gonna go in, but. Um, before it happens, well, you just have to be a bit inventive. So uh, what I'm doing instead is, you know the Amazon envelopes? When you fold it, it actually nicely slides into the slot. And I've got my little table that feeds the fiber and it works perfectly fine. So yeah, you just have to be a bit inventive. I'm gonna put it down because this is so incredibly heavy, my arm literally hurts. But yes, so I got the, the carder and uh, so obviously I got excited and I started carding the fleece that I have. I have loads of bags of fleece. Um, many of these bags I received with the wheel that I got back in April. And I have been spinning that fleece before, but I was using my hand carders, which I did not fully enjoy the process of carding the, all this fleece with my hands. So that's why eventually I started moving towards more like commercial, commercially prepared um, fiber. But now this carder got me excited again. So I started with carding um, the Rayland wool uh, that I got back in summer. I got it on a local farmer's market. I got it from Tina and Floyd. And it turns out that it's still full of lanolin. So um, I've been carding it. And the plan was to card it and then to dye it and then to spin it. But because it still has loads of lanolin, it has to be washed first because then I think the dye is not going to stick to a fleece that is still full of lanolin. Um, but because I've got a lot of it, uh, I think it's almost a kilo of fleece. It would just take a lot of space, it would take a long time to dry. So I figured I'm going to wait until summer um, with washing it so then I can just lay it out in the garden and just let it dry. Uh, so I I did card just a little bit and then I spun it and then I washed it and then I dyed it so I've got this like this little mini skein I love how it looks and I'm really excited to actually put my hands on it properly in summer but until this happens um, I decided to go back to my alpaca so with the fleece that I got with my spinning wheel um, I had loads of alpaca and I have spun a skein before so this is what it looks like I still haven't used it 
but as you can see it's got um, loads of different um, color variations that's because um, it's got loads of different shades um, within the fleece actually I'm going to show you to the fleece I'm going to try not to crinkle but it is in a plastic bag so it may be a little bit loud I apologize so this is the bag and as you can see hopefully there is a bit of a glare from the window but I think you can see different shades of fiber in this bag um, so while I was, um, sorry for the noise, uh, while I was carding this by hand, this is kind of the effect that I was getting, but now that I'm using my drum carder, everything gets blended in much nicer, so this is what I'm ending up with. Um, this is just a little sample, it was one of the first bats that came off the, the carder but it is more blended in, so it's going to look completely different to what I have um, here, um, which is fine. I think this one still looks great. It's got a little bit more character. Um, yeah, I'm just not entirely sure what I'm gonna use it for. See, the thing is that I, I'm not really massive on like accessories. Um, I really love knitting garments and sweaters and and I, from like smaller things, I tend to knit socks. But uh, a hand spun yarn or yarn that doesn't really have nylon or any kind of reinforcement is not really good for socks. So all of these sort of single skeins are sitting in my stash. Um, it's not a sweater quantity. I guess I could do some color work, but all of these yarns, they all feel differently, they have like different weight and I don't know whether they will look fine in um, in the same project but perhaps, um, I don't know but yeah, this is what I'm doing with my with my fleece right now so I am spinning my alpaca and because I have loads of this um, fiber I've got this whole bag that I just showed you and I think I've got one more bag like this maybe two I think one more I am pretty sure I've got like sweater quantity to spin so this is the aim however it can be a little bit boring I think I just got really hooked on uh, spinning like hand dyed fiber um, which is a little bit more engaging because you can see the colors changing and it's just much more fun but when you're spinning something that is just like one color all across, it can become a little bit boring. Um, speaking of which, I've got a bobbin here that I've been spinning for quite some time. Um, this is a fiber that I got from Woolly Knit a while ago. And it's, it's really boring. It's been on and off my wheel for ages because I just I just become really bored. I am really excited about the finished yarn because I really do like the color and I think it's going to be amazing. But the whole process of spinning it is a little bit boring. And I'm going quite thin with it as well, so I, I struggle to actually see the progress. I will sit at the wheel just for hours and I will feel like I haven't made any progress at all because it's just so, so thin. I've got 200 grams of this fiber, so yeah, not the most exciting process, but I kind of force myself every now and again, it goes back onto the wheel. But with the alpaca fiber, it kind of feels quite similar. I guess maybe just a little bit less boring because the alpaca, um, I think I have a slightly better connection with the fiber, if that makes sense, like because I know it's it came like straight from the animal like I know this came from an animal as well like this is 100% wool but I think it's because I can see it in this raw form and then I'm doing the carding myself um, I guess maybe it is slightly less boring uh, than the one that I just showed you but it still is not the most exciting um, project that I'm working on but I'm trying to push because I just try to keep thinking about the finished yarn that hopefully I can knit a whole sweater with. So 
when this whole thing is finished, I will uh, show it to you. One last thing that I wanted to show you as well, actually, is um, a hand-dyed braid, um, just very randomly. Uh, when I was dyeing this little skein, I had quite a lot of that purple left, so I didn't want to waste it, obviously. And so I decided to um, just throw a braid into the the pot and just see what comes out. So this is this purple, which I think is quite nice. So yeah, I might spin from it or I might gift it. I haven't made up my mind yet. I, I have now run out of the wool tops. Um, so I need to get some more. Uh, wool tops, plain wool tops, undyed wool tops for dyeing. Um, so I, I will be getting more, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe they will have Boxing Day sales um, on some websites and I can get something a little bit cheaper. As I said, I was, uh, I'm recording this before Christmas, so I still don't know what happens uh, during Boxing Day. There might be some sales, hopefully. Um, yeah, so actually that was all I had to show you in this episode. Um, I was thinking to myself, because it's the end of the year, it's like a good time to like sum up what I did in 2021. And I was kind of wondering like what kind of format to do it in. And I think because I've done quite a lot, I mean, for me, I believe I did quite a lot. Um, I've knitted loads of projects this year and talking about every single one of them would just take forever. So I decided to insert like a little video at the end, which is going to be like a, a slideshow of the images, I guess, in the chronological order, what I did across 2021. So if you are interested, you can stick around um, until the end of this video and have a look. Um, I will add on the screen all the names of the patterns and the designers, but I decided that I'm not going to put the links to every single pattern that's going to be featured in that slideshow because the description below this video would then get really messy and really long. So the description below is going to include only everything that I was talking about right now, so all my whips and finished objects. Um, if there is any particular project that you are interested in, in the slideshow that I'm going to show you in a minute, and if you want to find the links to those patterns, you can go to my Ravelry page. I have everything documented in there. I'm not good at um, putting notes about uh, modifications and stuff. Um, but I do put pictures, names of the patterns, I link to the designers, I always have the yarn that I made the project with and the quantities and stuff. So if you're interested in this, you can go to my Ravelry page. The link to my Ravelry is in the description below this video. If Ravelry is not accessible to you, just drop me a message and I will be more than happy to send you information or links to the designers and stuff. But in a nutshell, I did look at my Ravelry this morning because I was really curious how much I've knit in 2021. So as it turns out, um, I am not including my current whips. I am pretty sure they will be done before the end of the year, but as of now, I have made 30 knitted projects. Out of these 30 projects, I have knit 12 pairs of socks. So I was actually challenging myself this year. I was taking part in the uh, year of sock knitting 2021 challenge. So the aim was to knit a pair of socks every month. Um, I've already knit 12 because I think back in May, I have knit two pairs in one month. So my partner's sock that I'm knitting right now is going to be the 13th pair. Um, so uh, 12 or 13 pairs and I have also made within those 30 completed projects um, 11 garments which I think for me is quite impressive. Uh, that includes sweaters, cardigan, um, I have made some summer tops as well and yeah perhaps 12 if I finish my primavera. Uh, 
I also want to check, I haven't checked that yet, but I'm really curious to see how many kilometers or miles of yarn I used this year. I'm, I'm a bit weird for stats like this. I like this kind of stuff. So I'm, I will probably put it on the screen if you are interested um, in, a, in a video that you're about to watch if you want to. Um, so yeah, so that's the summary of my uh, 2021 knitting. And this is the last video of the year. So I will see you in 2022. And yes, I hope you had a lovely time with your family and friends um, for a Christmas break. Although now that I just said it, uh, I think loads of countries were actually adding more restrictions for the Christmas period. So let's not talk about it. I hope you had a wonderful time, regardless of what the situation was, regardless of who you were with and what you were doing. I hope you had a lot of knitting time and I hope you will have a lot of knitting and creativity time in 2022. So I will see you next year. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you.